Okay, here we are at Formnext. Uh, my name is Hugo uh, of AM Flow, and uh, well, we have a guest, Michael from Zigzag. Maybe you would like Hello. to introduce yourself a little bit. Sure, I'm Michael van der Zande. I'm uh, the COO at Zigzag. Zigzag is a part provider, 12 years in the business with uh, 10 machines, 10 HPM GIF machines mm -hmm. as of today. Um, we are rapidly expanding currently. Um, our, our floor plan is expanding, but as well as our sales team. So we're really on the expansion side currently. Okay, and what order of magnitude of parts are you uh, uh, processing? We have a range of prototyping parts, which will always be there, and a series of low and higher volume production, more to the serial production, which we use in our um, contract manufacturing branch. Like, uh, imagine uh, we print parts, as, as many others, but we then do packaging with them, add stickers, uh, we do grade two, grade four processes, and uh, etc. Okay, hey, and if you were to double, uh, well, let's say the upcoming year, where would your bottleneck be? Well, not location, as I just said, we, uh, the, 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 the site is uh, now under construction for literally times two. And um, when we double in space, so square meters, we can put even, uh, we, we did the calculations that we can go to 30 machines. Uh, the same with the offices, they also doubled. So we have more than room enough for uh, expansion in people. So bottleneck on that front uh, is nothing. The only thing is when you have extra machine capacity, you want to fill them. You want your uh, your kappa to be as high as possible. And when they're too high, we simply buy new machines. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Hey, um, I mentioned already Formnext. How do you like it this far? Well, this uh, it's the third time we're here as a, as a booth, as a stand. And this year we focused on hospitality uh, because we have quite the network. I think many, many companies and, and visitors know us. And this year we were like, okay, let's have these conversations with some music, with some food, with some drinks. And that really, it's the second day now that really turned out uh, even better than expected. I really appreciated the drinks yesterday. Yeah, indeed, so yeah well it done. works. It works a lot. And we're, I, we're, we're next to very big uh, booths, yours, HP, AMT. So uh, Twicket, another partner of ours, and it's, it's really a success. I yeah. think there's a very nice hybrid networking event going on where everybody has its place on the front of the chain at the production site, which is us, and then you guys. So it's really a good, uh, a good scene. Hey, and have you had the opportunity to see something yourself already? Or have you been stuck to your booth? I think, uh, I, think I should visit other booths way more. On the <laughs> when you arrive, you pass booths, and when you go, you <laughs> pass booths. So left and right, I've seen some things. But from what I hear, uh, it's around, what, 800? or 850 exhibitors, which is amazing. It shows that, that there is a real interest in, in, uh, in additive. But I think I'll use Thursday uh, as the day, so tomorrow to, to go and visit some, uh, some partners and uh, some potential new technologies. The good thing is, next to us, there's a company that uses a 2K, so like a soft material and a hard material, which is, for me, very eye-opening. So I'm going to learn a lot more on that front. So always something new at, uh, at Forum Next. Definitely, definitely. Hey, and well, if you haven't wandered around that much, I'm not sure if my question is fair, but did you see any specific themes, any changes in themes compared to the last uh, years? Um, well, something I realized when walking through is that there is, um, you have software, you have hardware, you have automation, all mixed through each other. So there is no real, let's say, structure, which is a good side because you then show yourself to people that weren't expecting your service. Although I think uh, for future generations of uh, Forum Next, maybe it's better to after a while say, okay, Hall 12.0 is everything concerning automation. Hall 12.1 is production, you know. Also for visitors, but that's maybe uh, something I've... It is a big search today, isn't it? It's but, uh... a big, big search because so many companies are, are plopping up like like um, like hell, which is good. But for visitors and, and, and us being in the scene, it's hard to see, okay, what is now new and relevant? Where do we have to put our attention to? Yeah. Hey, and you mentioned automation. Well, you're at AM Flow's booth, so <laughs> I think you're interested in automation as well. It's a theme. Yeah, we have to be, we have to be. Uh, as you know, we invest in your solution, which is uh, automatically uh, recognizing parts, sorting them, labeling them if need be. Um, and although you guys are doing a very great job, it's not 100%, which is normal. And we really want to be in a driver's seat with a system that's not 100% complete. We really want to give you feedback from the production side and really say, guys, this and this and this is still needed. Let's go there. Because if we, if we would be in the layback position, waiting, okay, guys, are, is, is the 100% solution there? 
we're missing the ball, you know? We want to be in the driver's seat and really also drive to where we feel the solution is needed. And I think yeah. that's what we're doing today, and I think that's why this partnership makes a lot of sense. Yeah, we're not happy with status quo either, so let's drive this forward together indeed. I like that a lot. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you look at automation, um, what's what, what more is there on your wish list? Ooh, we at Zigzag have a never-ending wish list. And it's uh, up to us as a partner to define do we, on which ones do we focus first. But I think we come from a very practical approach. So imagine we come uh, to work on a Monday. We use the system that we have and we really see, ah, this could be better. This will give us that extra push in efficiency. And then we can choose to communicate this to our partners, whether it's software or hardware. And we do this every day, every month, every year. And then we get a, a very big list of requirements which we can then prioritize. Uh, and what we often see is that um, the partner's first response is like, ah, but this request only comes from you, dear Zigzag, so I'm sorry, this will only be in Q4 of next year. And then after two months, we get contacted, hmm, since your request, we had two or three other companies also asking it, it's going to be sooner. So we, we feel that we are always like a little bit ahead. We want to be a little bit ahead. But we have to communicate this, and it's up to the partnership to really define what's uh, what's next. Yeah, nice, nice one. Hey, other theme I've seen personally is quality. Of course, we have it on our booth uh, here. We reveal a new quality machine. Yep. Um, is it a theme for you as well, quality? Yeah, no doubt. If, if 3D printing wants to mature, which it eventually will be, quality and automatic quality inspection yeah, is key. Uh, we're, we right now have humans with their eyeballs checking if parts are aesthetically fine, then you can measure with lab measurements, tools and so on, but this all takes time and it especially comes with a cost. And aside from uh, 3D printing having of course a lot of benefit, you can make a random shape on a random volume, at the end of the day you also want to make it affordable. Of course. And as you know we have to battle other traditional manufacturing methods like injection molding, milling and Cost is not the only driver, but it's a big driver. And automating QC is really going to be one of the main drivers to even break open that market even more. It will also give um, customers who might be critic uh, at a certain moment in time, will give them some confidence that, okay, my parts have been checked by this AM Flow quality solution. Here's my report. Um, we're set. Yeah, you mentioned the traceability. Is it important for your customers to have traceability of the uh, QC which happened? Well, there are two ways of looking at traceability. It's actually an interesting topic. Where 3D printing AM is today, traceability is needed. Why? Because all the manufacturing technologies are not yet mature. Because imagine there would be a magical technology that never makes a mistake. Why do you need traceability? Yeah. Yeah. So the need for traceability is actually linked to the fact that the technology is not yet 100%. As long as there's an opportunity for defects. Exactly. Yes. So yes, we need traceability today. So we have to make sure that traceability is there, but eventually down the road in the future, uh, we hope that traceability is just something we have, just in case, but don't need anymore. Clear vision, I would say. Well, thank you, Michael. Enjoy your last day at uh, Formnext, and I'm looking forward to uh, continue the cooperation. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. And uh, when you're around our booth, feel free to pay us a visit. And good job you guys are doing here. I think you're also in the driver's seat to really push where automation can bring AM. Thank you. You're welcome.